Hello, and this is my first of the GML series. Um, not completely affiliated with RTS. And some requested it. It was going to be a quick one. I wanted to get a video out there, so this is it. Uh, if you have other requests, keep sending them in. So this is idle animation uh, and walking animation, how to go between them. Um, so I'm going to basically start off by showing you what we're going to do. This is with the uh, Bastendorf Evergrass game, uh, which one of the thing that's been going uh, beta will be coming out soon. And uh, this game pretty much, this is uh, a pretty extensive platform engine. Uh, it has a couple bugs like the menu, but other than that. Um, so if you're making a platform game, and besides what I'm going to be doing now, uh, if you need some of the things, for instance, uh, double jump instead of just jump, we can do that. Uh, the um, Also the attack and whatnot, and AI in here, etc, etc. So platform. So you'll notice that he'll walk in a direction and his feet will move whatever. And if you stand still, he'll blink. Uh, you can also have him sway back and forth a little bit. It's all up to you. Uh, so that's the thing. And when he falls off of uh, objects or he jumps, he goes into his jump thing. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. Now to start, in order to do all of that, you're going to need several sprites. Um, you're actually going to need six sprites. I also put in swimming, but the swimming is the same as walking. So the first one you're going to need, and you only really need three sprites. Then you can reverse them horizontally. Uh, so this is one of the sprites, and it's just your character. And you have your character, and you can do pixel or whatever. So you have your character, and this is your idle animation. Uh, char I did char underscore right underscore still for the sprite. And basically, it's how he animates while he's facing right, and he's not walking. So all of the animation you want to put in there, put it right in here. For this, it's the same image, except a pause, and then he blinks. And so if you want to make him slowly sway back and forth, you can put that in the animation, if you want to have him blink. Uh, some games will even have the character, like, I think it was, um... Conker's Bad Fur Day, he would just pull out a yo-yo and start yo-yoing a little bit until you moved. Uh, some games do that, and they can randomize it a little bit. So just get your idle animation that you want to do, throw it in here, and then reverse it and do it char left underscore still. Then you're going to need a walking a walk cycle, so just your character walking. Uh, he'll pro Don't forget, he'll probably crouch down, and when your foot goes down, your head crouches down a little bit. Just remember that when you're animating. Uh, it makes it look a lot better. And then you can reverse that for character left walking. Then you have jump. Uh, this is the jump picture right here. Um, so we have a jump thing. Whatever you want to do for a jump, you can throw that in there. And then do, once again, the left one. And anytime you want an animation, just do it. And you can do it in both ones. Now, um, in platforms, I always have a variable facing. And, for instance, I have facing equals zero right here. And what it does is it tells me which way he's facing. Uh, I believe zero means he's facing right. Uh, I'll put that in a comment. Zero is equal to right. One is equal to left. So we're going to put that in there. So once you have a variable facing, then you can do pretty much everything else in the step and key press events, as in when you're walking. In the step event, I have one for jumping. In order to make it always so the character's jumping, what you do is if v speed exclamation point equal zero. So if v speed does not equal zero, then facing if facing equals one, which means you're facing left, sprite underscore index equals jump underscore left. And then you have if facing equals zero, sprite underscore index equals jump underscore right. So now what you're doing is, depending on which way you're facing, you'll draw your sprite of jumping either left or right. And the only time that you will, your v-speed will not equal zero is when um, you are standing still. So if you're moving up and if you're jumping or if you're falling, uh, it will go into a jump sprite. So when you fall, you also look like you're jumping. 
Then you have your left and right keys, which would be A and D if you're using WSAD, or left and right arrows. I only have it for WSAD right now. So on your A key, when you're holding it, you have, uh, whenever you move, that the sprite underscore index equals character underscore left underscore walking, and then you're going to have to mess with image speed. If your image looks really fast, decrease it by saying image underscore speed equals 0 0.5. If that's too slow, then do 0 0.7, etc. Mess with this number. And all of this other stuff like if jump limit and x minus whatever and facing and whatnot is all uh, extra stuff that you, you can, that this is for double jumping, this is for moving, and you have facing equals one which means now that you hit the key facing was one so all of the sprites will now face left so when you stop moving you'll face left and then for the D key we have very similar code um, uh, we check the jump limit again uh, sprite underscore index equals char underscore right underscore walking and then image speed is 0 0.5 because it's the same image and then facing equals zero which means we're facing right now so well, that's all set so the game knows the character's facing right because you hit the right key and it's animating and we have our move code up here then you have release and release is very simple as well it's just sprite underscore index equals char underscore left underscore still and then image underscore speed equals 0 0.5 because we're going to keep that like that so when you release the key you go down into still and then you can the same thing for D except right sprite underscore index equals char underscore right underscore still because you stopped moving but you're still facing right and you want your idle animation so we have our idle animation in there we have a jump animation when we're falling or jumping and we have a walking animation when you're holding down the key and in the step event of course it has um, you can put some of that in the step but most of it can fit right in the keys you can see we have the double jump and whatnot And when we fall, it'll also do that. And we'll walk. And when we stand still, it'll actually blink. There you go. So you can get as crazy as you want with your idle animations and animations in general. Uh, if you want to do different animations, idle animations, then what you do is... Um, you go to your character, and you put in at event... Um, other uh, animation end and what that bit and then uh, during animation end you would put in code that um, if facing equals one which would mean you're facing left um, sprite underscore index is equal to and then you'd have your sprite and if you want it to do it uh, more than one what you do is you come up with a random number uh, let's see where's your... oh you do a random number and then you do it like that so um, if facing equals one and um, what would it be? And uh, idle equals one, and that would be your first idle animation. And what you do is you'd have uh, to create a random number, random underscore range one comma four, I believe. Oh, and it would have to be idle. Idle is equal to random underscore range one to four. And then what that'll mean is you'd get four different idle animations, and you'd say sprite underscore index is equal to idle underscore one underscore left. And then you'd do it the other way, and you'd have um, if facing, and you'd do that all the way down to four, and then you'd do it again with one, and idle equals Oh, if facing equals zero and idle equals one. So you'd change which way you're facing for both of them and so whatnot. So you could then just copy this.
and you would have idle 2, idle 3, and idle 4. Pretty much get the point. And you would duplicate that all for the other side. So now you can have any one of four idle animations playing as long as you actually get the animations. I can't actually show this to you because I don't have idle animations to show you. But if you actually get enough idle animations, you can do a random idle animation. And this will only happen if uh, you're being still, uh, which would mean. And the way you do that is if. Uh, if speed is equal to zero, and then you'd have else idle is equal to zero. So since none of these are zero, that would make it so. There's your full code if you want to do a random idle animation as long as you have the idle animations set and you just name them like that, then you're all set. Uh, this of course would be sprite underscore index is equal to idle underscore one underscore right and um, you just be able to do all those like that and it works out pretty well so that's pretty much it if you have other GML requests please request them um, I'm not sure what the next video topic will be so it is open to discussion just go ahead and make your request um, and it can be any genre, just try to stay away from FPS and multiplayer ones because Game Maker is not worth the hassle that uh, it takes to make them, especially considering the quality of the finished FPS. So, other than that, RPG, platform, whatever you want, go ahead and request it, and thanks for watching.